Hey everybody, Doll with a Dollar here, and today I have a video that I'm sure some of you are probably pretty curious about. I mentioned in one of my last videos that my family is planning a trip to Disney World. And you may be saying, okay, Ashley, Disney World is really expensive. Traveling is really expensive in general. Like, how are you, when you're here trying to tell us like how to save money on things, able to afford to go on a trip? So I am going to do this video today to show you guys what we do to help save money for a trip. First of all, no matter how little money you make, um, I believe that you should always keep a little bit of entertainment in your life. Um, I, I follow a lot of Dave Ramsey's practices. He's a um, like a Christian financial advisor and and he's all about the envelope system and the snowball effect and all that kind of stuff and um, even he believes that where you should cut back on a lot of things to help meet your financial goals you can't take entertainment away not as not all of it because if you take away the entertainment then you're going to lose your motivation really, really quickly. Um, if you take out all of the fun out of your life, all of the things that you're used to doing or all of the things that you would like to do, if you take all of that stuff away, then it's really hard to stay motivated because you feel like you can't do anything. So my husband and I, we one of the big things that we like to try to save for is a vacation. We cut back on so many other areas so that we are able to go on a vacation every year. Um, and that means that we have to sacrifice going out to eat. We have to sacrifice buying ourselves like brand new clothing and things like that. But to us, that's worth it. So your thing may not be vacations. Your thing may be, oh, I like lots of shoes. Well, if that's your thing, then that's fine. You can use some of these techniques for your shoe addiction or if you love to shop for clothing and stuff like that or if you really like to go out to eat a lot or go to movies or whatever your entertainment thing is, you can use some of these methods to help you um, do these things. Now, we don't use our normal salary stuff for vacation because after we pay our bills there's just frankly not enough left there's not a lot left and sometimes it's really hard to get all of the things that you need with the salary that we have left um my husband gets paid twice a month so every two weeks and so for the first check we pay like all of the main bills like utilities and phone bill and electricity and all of that stuff and then whatever's left over we usually have about 150 to 200 dollars give or take some um, depending on how much your electricity is and all of that. Anyway we usually have 150 to 200 dollars left to buy everything so that includes like groceries and gas and any kind of like other entertainment stuff we do like we don't do without clothing items and stuff but instead of going out to department stores and buying clothes brand new we go to like thrift stores and yard sales and stuff and I'm gonna tell you you can find some really good name brands and some really high quality things that haven't been used very much at yard sales and thrift stores you just have to you know, not be afraid to look and not be afraid to kind of dig and get your hands dirty a little bit. Because, um, like, even my little boy, we have gotten most of his clothes throughout his entire life at thrift stores and yard sales and these little kid consignment sales that go on. Um, and he hasn't had very much new things in his life, um, except for, like, birthdays and Christmas and, and stuff, of course. But, like, even his toys, a lot of his toys we've bought from, like, thrift stores and yard sales and things like that. And he's fine. He doesn't know any different. And the same with us. Like, my husband has found some great shoes at thrift stores that have hardly been worn at all. Um, but anyway, we save money on that kind of thing by doing that. We don't eat out hardly at all unless either number one somebody pays for us to go out like my grandparents sometimes just want to take us out to eat so in that case we'll go out or if it's a special occasion like the other day I treated my husband um, out to eat for Father's Day so sometimes we do eat out um, but it's just not near like it used to be we used to eat out several times a week 
Um, that includes like fast food and stuff like that. But now we very, very rarely eat out. Like in, even with fast food, like we like never eat out. Um, I cook all of our meals. I, I go grocery shopping and buy all the stuff and we cook our meals. And it is so, so, so much cheaper that way. Um, and I know, I guess I'll go into that like another video because I know like sometimes it does feel like eating out is cheaper, but uh, if you really think about it, it's not. But anyway, um, we sacrifice those kind of things because we want to go on vacations. Now with our second paycheck of the month, we pay like our house payment and homeowner's insurance and all of the stuff that bulks together with like home ownership. So yet again, even after that check, there's still only about $150 to $200 left on that as well. So for the whole entire month, you're looking at somewhere between three and $400 left to buy groceries, gas, everything. So that's really not a lot. You're looking at less than a hundred bucks a week to live off of. Um, and considering most everything around where I live is a good 30 minute drive away, you know, you have to save a good bit for gas and stuff like that as well. So, all that to say, like, you kind of have to have a motivation. Like, we don't use our salary for um, vacation because there's just not enough for that kind of thing. Because sometimes there are things that come up, like doctor's visits or whatever, that you need that money for. Um, also, we do sometimes get a little bit of money back on our tax return. Um, you could use that as some of your entertainment if you want to. However, we choose to just put that in our savings account to be kind of like an emergency fund. For example, we're going to have to get new tires probably next month because my car... Um, it's had the same tires for a while now and we've driven it a lot so it, it's time for it to get new tires so you know that's going to be probably four or five hundred dollars and we can take that from our emergency fund because we put our tax return into that um now you may not have tax return or or whatever you may not have any money in savings so you know maybe these methods are something that can help you build up your emergency fund and then you can start saving towards entertainment and stuff I kind of like to go by the rule of thumb that Dave Ramsey has where like you need to probably have at least a thousand dollar cushion in your savings account before you start thinking about all of this entertainment and stuff um, but yeah, like maybe these methods can help you build up your savings account or whatever. But anyway, let me get into it. Let me show you guys what we're doing to plan our trip to Disney World and how we're um, coming up with the money and how we're saving money in certain ways. And if you keep watching this series, we'll have more money saving tips as we go along, like money saving um things that we're going to make before we go on our trip or things that we're going to buy before we go on our trip that we know are more expensive whenever we get on the road. We'll do a lot of preparation videos and things like that if you guys are interested. Um, some will be more Disney related, but some are just going to be travel in general. But um, please subscribe so you can um, keep up with these videos and hopefully they can help you. So um, I'm going to be looking down a little bit because I've got um, some notes here. But the first thing you're going to want to do if you're going to want to save money on a Disney World trip, and I'm sure it can apply to Disneyland too or even some other trips if Disney's not your thing, but we always um, do a Google search for when is the best time to visit Disney World. And I think the website we use is called myfirstvisit.net or myfirstvisit.com or something like that. I'll leave the link below so that you guys can check that out. But the first thing we do is we always check that. And it, it ranks the best weeks to go. It ranks like every week the entire, like all 52 weeks, it ranks them according to different um, categories. So like if you're wanting to go during a time that like, everybody's out of school like say you're a teacher and you can only go when school is out or your kids can only go when school is out then it ranks some of those weeks and which weeks um, would be the best to go and all that um, my family though we don't really have a time stipulation that 
that we have to go or whatever. So we kind of take two factors into consideration when we go. Although there's many, many factors on there that you can tailor towards your needs. But the two that we always look at is one, the price. We always like to go at a cheaper time of the year. And two, the crowds. We like to go when there's not a ton of crowds. So we try to find the best week to go that kind of satisfies both of those needs where it's a cheaper week and a less crowded week. So once we, that's the first thing we do. We pick our week according to that chart. Um, so we're going to be going in September this year. So that's the first thing. And um, Some of you, like if you've never planned a trip to Disney World before, you could use a travel agent. From my understanding, most travel agents are free to use. They just kind of get a commission through like Disney World or whatever. But if you're not used to doing this kind of thing, sometimes they'll be able to help you get the best rate. However, my family just always does the the planning themselves. So my second thing is to go to the Disney website and um, on the Disney website there's usually always some kind of promotions going on and there's usually more than one. Like right now whenever you go on there is a free dining plan one going on, there's a 25% off rooms promotion going on, there's a couple of family of four deals, family of three deals, um, early, like late summer deals going on. Like there's always lots and lots of deals. And it, my recommendation for this is to plug your information into a lot of those different scenarios. Like we knew that the, the promotions ending like it, in August wouldn't work because we were going in September. So we skipped those. But I first plugged in my, um, my search criteria into the free dining plan. Um, because I do believe that getting a dining plan usually will save you a good bit of money because since we don't eat out a lot during the year, we do eat out while we're at Disney World. So we usually do the quick service plan, which is like all fast food kinds of meals. But I just had a friend that went and he his family didn't want to do the quick service plan because they thought they would just be eating burgers and fries the whole time. But that's not the case at all. Like there's a lot of really good places to eat with a lot of different varieties of food on that quick service plan. And so that's what we always do. We've never done like the little sit down meals because you can sit down in the quick service restaurants and it'd be fine. And to us, we would rather get out and do more rides and stuff than waste time in restaurants. But if that's not your thing, then definitely, you know, do the math or whatever on your um, meal plans. But for us, um, we've gone before without meal plans and we've ended up spending a lot more than the cost of a meal plan because we've gone before and thought, oh, well, you know, I don't snack a lot at home, so I'm probably not going to snack when I'm in Disney World. But you get so hot and you get so thirsty and you get so hungry because you're going to be <laughs> walking like... 20 and 30,000 plus steps a day um, whenever you're in Disney World. So your feet hurt at the end of the day and you're just hungry and thirsty. So you're going to want all those neat tri um, treats and stuff that they have. You're going to want a Dole Whip. You're going to want churros. You're going to want to eat Mickey Mouse shaped ice creams and stuff. So, um, it, and the food is not that 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 expensive to me the drinks are kind of what costs the most on average to me the meals are around 10 bucks and nowadays if you go to burger king and get a whopper and fries it's going to be just about eight dollars anyway so you can get a lot better tasting food than burger king at um disney world for like 10 bucks so we always do the meal plan however if you're wanting to save money even further then one, you can get free dining, or um, Disney World is one of the only theme parks that actually allows you to bring coolers and drinks into their parks. You can't have like, you know, the rolling kind of coolers, and you can't have like glass containers and stuff, but you can bring your own soft-sided cooler in filled with drinks and food and all of that. So if you're on a really, really tight budget, you know, the Disney hotels, if you stay on Disney property, have little mini fridges in the hotel room so you can bring lunch meat and cheeses and things like that and make sandwiches every day and take them into the parks. And we do, even though with the Disney dining plan, you do get free snacks during the day, 
We also usually take some homemade snacks as well, and that will be another video that I'll be doing later. Um, that'll be another video that I end up doing later to show you guys some Disney-themed snacks that you can take in the park to help give you that Disney feeling, even though you're not paying all of this money for this snack. Um, so I will be doing that video too, but those are things you can do. You can definitely take food in the parks to help with your food, but we do do a Disney dining plan. So that kind of went off subject a little bit because we kind of went off food, but um, my recommendation whenever you're trying to find the cheapest Disney vacation is to plug your information into all those different promotions. At first, we tried to do the Disney dining plan thing with the free dining plan, um, but we went down a couple of more levels and we ended up finding a family of three thing and even though my little boy is free so it would really be like a family of two plugging in all of your information into this stuff you can find different rates and so even though we were a family of three in this situ situation um, we weren't technically a family of three in this situation this ended up being cheaper so we ended up putting our stuff in there it gave us a discounted room rate it gave us a discounted ticket rate and we ended up paying full price for a Disney dining plan but it still ended up being cheaper than just going with the flat out free dining rate usually free dining rate is cheaper than your 25 percent off of your rooms thing but definitely plug in all of your information into that site and figure out um, which price is going to be best for you so that is my second and third tip since we kind of touched on food in there a little bit too um okay now to actually getting up the money to go um one of the things that we did just like last weekend was we had a yard sale and i've been collecting things throughout the year i've been going through closets i cleaned out my husband's closet um, I might show it to you, but I cleaned out my husband's closet and reorganized it and took out a lot of the shirts that, that didn't fit him anymore or shoes and pants and all that kind of stuff. I took out the things that he wasn't wearing anymore. I did the same thing in my closet and my little boy's closet. Um, I've been going through games and things that we don't play and movies that we don't watch. I've just been collecting all of this stuff. Well, and then I go to a thrift store that often has a stuff-a-bag sale where they're just trying to get rid of these clothes. Like they've been in the place for a long time and they can't get rid of them. So they end up doing like stuff a big garbage bag for a dollar kind of thing. And so we do that a good bit. And so we had a ton of clothes for sale. Um, but we had a yard sale. And we made, I think it was like $270 um, this past weekend, which doesn't sound like a lot, but whenever it's stuff that's just sitting in your home, cluttering your house that you don't need anymore, that was $270 right there that we put towards our vacation. That wasn't for like, you know, our paying bills or anything because we do have a budget and we usually stick to our budget really well and don't have trouble with our bills very much. So that whole amount went toward um, our Disney fund. And so we have a, like a piggy bank thing that we put all of our Disney fund money into. Um, also, we also sell on eBay on the side, like for things that sometimes at yard sales, people aren't going to pay the full amount of money that an item is worth. And in those cases, I like to use eBay. Now with clothing and stuff, unless something's just a really nice piece of clothing, a lot of times the effort that you put into selling a piece of clothing is not going to be worth it on eBay because by the time you pay the shipping and the fees and all that stuff, your profit margin is usually pretty small. But for example, if you have some electronics that still work or my husband had a pair of shoes that were just sitting around that hurt his feet. I think he'd worn them like one time. And so I didn't want to put them in a yard sale because we had paid like a hundred bucks for the shoes originally. And I didn't want to put them in a yard sale for like three to five dollars. So I put them online and on eBay and they sold for 50. And so that $50 went towards like our Disney fund. Um, so some items we sell on eBay if they can make a bigger profit on eBay than in a yard sale, we do that. Um, a lot of those kind of things are like you know, smartwatches and cell phones and cameras and, 
usually electronic -y kind of items usually do pretty well on there. So any money that we sell on eBay, we also put towards our Disney fund. Also, going back to kind of the same thing with yard sales and stuff, and I promise don't exit out of this video yet, this is not all going to be about selling things, just these first three things kind of are, but don't exit yet, just bear with me. But this last thing is look online um, and check if your area has some of the consignment kid sales. In my area, there's like three or four different cities nearby that do that that do the kid sales where you take your kids clothing and um, car seats and all that kind of stuff that they've outgrown and you can price it however you want to and they give you the money for it. They take a small fee out but usually you get a little bit better prices than yard sales and in fact we shop at these quite a bit too because you can't always find what you want at yard sales and thrift stores and you can usually find some really nice name brand things um, and just really nice things in general that normally would be huge expensive purchases that you can get for really cheap um, at a consignment sale. So again, I was telling you about the, the stuff a bag. One of the big things that I usually stuff a bag with is kids clothes because kids clothes take up not a lot of room in the garbage. So you can fill up like a huge garbage bag with tons and tons and tons of clothes for like a dollar. And by the time you sell those pieces for even a dollar a piece, you have a pretty good profit margin there. Um, I did a kid sale like last year and I didn't have near as much as what I'm about to put in one because our, our nearby city is having one next month. So I'm in the process of going through clothes and stuff like that. In fact, I'm going to show you a quick clip here of some of the stuff I'd gotten from one stuff a bag. But that's not all of the stuff I have. But last year I put some items in and I think I made like $130 um, off of the kids sale with not not a lot of stuff put in so that's a really good way too to make some money um, to put towards your Disney fund or whatever okay another thing that you can do is um, Walmart has an app and this is not going to get you a lot by any means but every little bit helps whenever you're trying to save and this can be towards your Disney fund or going out to eat or shopping or whatever um, but Walmart has this thing in their app called the saving, Savings Catcher, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. Like whenever you go grocery shopping and you scan your receipt, Walmart will compare those prices to the prices of other stores around, and if they find a cheaper price, then they give you the money back. Well, we have the Walmart Bluebird card, so anytime there's money um, left um, that gets refunded back to us we put it on the bluebird card right now we have about fifty dollars um on our bluebird card and so walmart does sell disney um gift cards and so for that fifty dollars and whatever other money that we get on it you know before our trip but say i just had that fifty dollars i can go buy two fifty two twenty five dollar disney gift cards so that's fifty bucks free towards our trip and the Disney gift cards you can use to pay for your trip you can also use them for souvenirs and stuff but the Disney gift cards as long as they're not Disney store gift cards but regular Disney gift cards can pay for your trip they can pay for your tickets they can pay for your hotel room they can pay for food they can pay for souvenirs they can pay for pretty much anything on Disney property and so that's fifty dollars right there that we can put towards Disney gift cards for our trip um, on that same kind of idea with the Disney gift cards, we usually go buy our gift cards for Sam's, like from Sam's. We don't ever like use our debit card to pay for Disney World because... At Sam's, they have a deal where you can buy the gift cards at a discounted rate. But, like, you can buy a $25 gift card for $24 and some change, and you can buy, like, $150 for $142 and some change, and then, like, a $500 gift card for, like, $400 and I can't remember how much, like, $70-something, I think. So, even though, like... Uh, 
an $8 savings on a $150 gift card doesn't sound like a lot by the time you buy enough to pay for your whole trip that usually can save you a pretty good amount of money that you can use towards souvenirs or that you'll just have anyway so like instead of paying $150 I can pay $142 and have $8 left to put towards the next gift card. Sam's though does not have the smaller gift cards like um, in store right now they just have the three pack for $150 but if you go to samsclub.com you can buy the $25 one, the $500 one, and the $150 one I think. The $125, the $150, and $500 if I'm not mistaken. And the $500 one ends up being the best amount of savings and our trip is going to cost like $1,500 for um um, five days and so anyway by the time you buy that many gift cards it ends up saving a pretty good bit. The last two ways that I make money for my trip to go and this is not sponsored by any means this is just me trying to help you guys and trying to tell you guys how we're coming up with the money to go but I do a couple of side jobs and I only do these like when my little boy is napping um, or at night, late at night, whenever I can't sleep, which is quite often because my mind gets to running. Um, but I maybe work on this maybe two hours a day and I don't even do it every day because um, sometimes, you know, you just may not have time. You may not be home or your little boy may not sleep very much or whatever, but I do this kind of just on the side, but the first thing I do is um, quick tate, and you can go on there, and it, it really is kind of like applying for a job, so don't get in your mind that this is going to be like a really simple, I'm going to sign up and work and be done kind of thing. Like, you can work as much or as little as you want, and I have gone before and just not done it for several months, and like, you're still hired or whatever, but the initial hiring process, you do kind of have like an application to do, and you have a background check that you have to do, um, and like a typing test to see like how many words per minute you can type and stuff like that. But if you get hired on, um, which I think pretty much everybody does if you if you type pretty quick. But anyway, um, if you get hired on, then you will be typing out these messages. So a lot of the times, like I guess businesses or whatever will have voicemails called into them and you'll just type out what it says and submit it and they pay you so many so much money per word word now you get a lot of butt doll situations um so you know it's not very exciting work a lot of times you have a lot of times where you're just sitting there and like you push no audio which you don't get paid if you don't type anything but I do end up getting about $20 to $30 a week from this site. So where that doesn't sound like a lot, whenever you're just doing it for a couple, few hours a week, that's really not that bad. And it gives you $20 to $30 a week or, a hundred, you know, almost like $100 a month or more um, towards your trip. So I do that. And then the last little thing I do is opinion outpost. I know a lot of people do things like swag bucks and I know a lot of people do different survey sites. I've tried lots and lots and either one, they didn't pay off as much as I thought they would or two, they were a scam. But opinion outpost seems to be one that's pretty legit because I actually have made money from them. I usually average about $10 a week from them. But once you... Um, once you get to a certain point, like you get so many points per survey and once you get to 100 points, you can cash it out for $10 um, towards your PayPal. So I've done that a few times already. I've only been doing it like two or three months, but I've probably made 50 or $60 from them. Um, so, you know, that's another little thing that can go towards... Um, your Disney fund. Oh, and going back to Quick Tate, they also pay you via P via PayPal um, every week. Like when you first start typing, it'll take you about a month before you get your first check. But if you keep typing, you'll get paid like every Monday. But you get paid via P PayPal. Via PayPal. That's kind of hard to say. Um, 
I said that was my last thing, but I, I did skip one. Another thing that we do, and this is going to sound so insignificant, but I promise you it's one of the ways that pays off the most. Um, what we do every week, you know I told you like we usually have $150 to $200 left um, per two-week period, you know, $400 a month, whatever. So whatever we have left, what we do is like I pay all of the bills and then whatever's left, I leave some of my account just in case there's some random fees or something that I don't know are coming and I don't want to overdraft. So I usually leave about $20 or $30 in there and then with the rest, I take that out as cash. And so I go to the bank, I go to the ATM, I get my cash out and then I pay for all of my groceries and gas and everything with cash. So, say for example, I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy, you know, <laughs> this thing because I did go today and buy a pack of these. Um, say you buy a pack of like party favors and you pay a dollar ten at the register because it's a dollar plus tax. So, I paid a dollar ten. So, I gave the, la the lady two dollars and so she gave me 90 cents change back. So, I always, always take my change and put it in the little money counter roller thing. And I don't I don't care if something costs five dollars and one cent and I have a hundred pennies in my change purse. I give the person six dollars. And so that ninety-nine cents I can put in my change jar. And I have, you know, just like a little motorized um, change counter that separates the quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, all that. And then you can stick them in the roll whenever the coins get to the line. And that little counter didn't cost very much money. I think I got it at a yard sale. But that way, um, it's really easy to roll your money. I don't do the coin star thing because they take um, like 10% out. Um, and 10%, if you have a good bit of change, is a good bit of money. Like, if it's 100 bucks that you have in change, it takes $10 away. So, I do my own little rolling of the coins, and then I put those rolls of coins in that jar I was telling you about, where I put my cash and my gift cards and stuff. And then, once I get so many, I take them all to the bank and cash them in for cash. And then, I can buy more gift cards for my Disney fund or whatever. So, I always, always... Um, I never spend change. I always save my change. And you would be surprised how much change you accumulate in a week if you go ahead and just cash out um, how much money you have to spend. So set yourself a budget. Take that amount out in cash. After you pay your bills, take that amount out in cash and pay for your stuff with cash. And number one, it'll change your way you're thinking and make you think twice. Because with me, it may not be the same for you, but with me, it is so much easier for me to just take out a debit card and swipe things and I don't have to think about it that much. But whenever I have cash, I really have to think about, okay, is this something I really, really need right now? And so... Cash helps in a lot of ways, not only to save your change, but also to make you think twice about purchases sometimes. But anyways, those are the ways that we are saving for our Disney trip. Those are our quick, our quick and easy tips for saving our money for our trip. Again, like I said, this is not taking from your salary or your savings account or anything like that. I don't want to put you guys in debt, but there are little things that you can do on the side that can help you have um, some entertainment and fun. And like I said before, please subscribe. I'm going to have some more Disney prep and travel prep um, tips and tricks and money saving ideas for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know it was kind of long, but I hope it helped you. Um, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye-bye.